Happy New Year. Welcome to 2018. And I know that God has a great plan for each and every one of you. And uh, how many of you believe that? Yes. God has a great plan for you. And I know that God is going to do a lot of supernatural things in your life. Is that a good one for you? Yes. I know that God is going to intervene by his divine intervention. Do you like that? God is going to do miracles in your life. Okay, how about that? You like it? Can you say a good heartily amen? Yes. Do you know that our God is a miraculous working God? Yes. And God loves you. He cares for you. He's going to help you. He's going to show miracle in your life even right now. He's going to answer your prayers. Come on now. Give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> that is statement of faith in what we believe, you know, because he is a mighty God. And this is not only a theory, but uh, this is something that you can not only know God intellectually, but you know God experientially. You can not only know him in your mind, in your intellect, but you know him because you experience him. How many of you like that? And that is my prayer. Every time you come to church on Sunday or when you come to carousel, when you gather together among the believers, I know that God has a great plan and his plan is for you to to experience his tangible presence, his tangible love, his tangible power, and not only for you, but also through you. God is going to use you. Amen? All right. Praise the Lord. I have a specific words that I prayed. When I prayed, I know that God will minister to all of you today, even for you who are watching via the internet, because I know that God has a specific word for his people. Isn't that amazing that every time you hear a message that the Holy Spirit anointed, you know, um, you will as if you, that, that, that message can be um, customized as if it is specifically for you. That is the amazing thing about the work of the Holy Spirit. So when you, when you hear somebody preach, the preacher from this pulpit, and when you hear pr uh, pastors, preachers, prophets speaks, you know, it's just like, hey, you, you hear from the same person at the same hour, from the same place, from the same man, and you will get a specific word no matter what. So how many of you give the freedom for the Holy Spirit to speak to you? Yes. Say a good yes. yes. Really? All right, praise the Lord. And uh, I, I, I come with expectation, I, and I'm, I'm very excited, and I know that God will speak to you supernaturally, supernaturally to each one of you. And before that, I want to take time right now to pray for our beloved young man, Ifan, who's going to go to back to Indonesia. Where are you, Ifan? I cannot see you. Uh, he is, oh, he is on this side here. Come on. We are going to pray for him, um, this young man. Is that, is that a, a, a good hand clap or you, 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 you clap like that because you don't want to miss him? What does that mean? <laughs> and uh, I'd like to have, uh, get, have a mic for me because um, Ifan, I, I've known Ifan, uh, or Ivan, since he was a, uh, a teenager. The first time I met him, he was chubby. Is, is that true? <laughs> and then one day the Holy Spirit touched him and uh, he went back to Indonesia. And for some reason when he came back, he was slim. He was, whoa, my goodness, what did you do, Ivan? And then he said, oh, I've been fasting. So this young man, he is a man of prayer and fasting. And I know that he is a, where is the mic? I, I, I need the mic. When? Oh, right here. Okay. <laughs> I know Ifan is a man of a few words, but uh, I give him a few minutes because I'll ask him to give a speech, whatever that is. So, uh, because I, I really thank him. For those of you that don't know him, this young man has been uh, faithfully serving in the music ministry. And do you know where he lives? He lives in Tustin. You know where Tustin is? Close to Judea, Samaria. <laughs> Yes, uh, and uh, for him to drive from Tustin here for music practice, sometimes it takes him like two hours, two and a half hours maybe. Uh, what's that? Sometimes an, hour, sometimes. sometimes an hour he's being generous. <laughs> so uh, we are going to send him off as he is going to go back to Indonesia. 
And uh, I'd like to invite all the music team to come forward, please. Come on, all of you music team. I want you to surround him. And we are going to pray for him. So as you, come on, Kaka, come here, Ivan. And uh, I, I want to appreciate you. You, you, are, you are a blessing. You are a blessing. And he is a model of many, many young men. And he is, he's been a blessing not only to the young people, but also for the older generation, for the parents. He, he, is, he is a mature man of God. And he loves Jesus, and he really means it. He is hungry after God. He is the man that I, I don't want to say things out of the pedestal just because he, uh, just because he, he, he wants to go back to Indonesia. No, I don't want to put him on the pedestal to, to harm him in any way, anyway, no. But, but I know for sure that he is a, a man of integrity. He is a man that is uh, humble. And uh, so... Um, you, I want you to give a few words. Is, is it okay for you? I know you're a man of few words, but I, I pray right now, give him download. <laughs> so he will speak to, to the young people, to the music team, to whatever the Holy Spirit put in your heart. It's on. Yes. <laughs> well, first of all, I just want to say thank you to all the leaders, all the pastors who have guided me, who have really mentored me throughout the years. I mean, 10 years is a really long time, and it's uh, it's a very emotional journey for me because I I uh, came here with you know not knowing much and I grew so much from this church and I've um, I know I planted my seed on a good soil and this church is a, a good soil you know to plant your seeds and I've really grown so much I've learned so much from the ministry and want to thank you for the uh, to Pastor Paul and all the pastor leaders who uh, for allowing me to uh, minister here to all the music music ministry to uh, thank you for letting me play. Uh, I've learned so much. I've grown so much in this church, and I just want to say thank you. And I've uh, uh, I grew up in this church, so it's uh, the DNA of this church will always be with me. And I I, I really hope I can be back here soon. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody said. Yeah. <laughs> yes, praise the Lord. So. We are going to, uh, somebody said it's on the record, okay. <laughs> so we are going to pray and uh, feel free, any of you get a prophetic word, is it okay? So stir up your spirit and uh, I know that uh, I want to welcome uh, his father is also here, Mr. Winata. Uh, please come forward, this is Ivan's father and also Yolanda, come forward. I know you are not in the music team but you are in the team. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, uh, if somebody got any prophetic words, uh, grab this mic, all right. So, why don't you stretch your hand, stretch your hand as we are going to pray. We are going to pray for him, for Jesus. Father, I thank you for this man. Lord, I thank you for Ifan. Can somebody hold this mic? Oh, I forget. Lord Jesus, I pray that as he's going back to Indonesia, we know that your plan is always with him because you have planted your word in his, in his heart, in his life. And Lord, I know that you are going to use him in, the, in another place, but we know that you, the same spirit that is in Ifan, the same spirit is going to work as, as well as Indonesia, in Indonesia as well as he is here. And Lord, we know, we thank you, oh God. We thank you all these times, all his ministry, his faithfulness, his sacrifice, his commitment, his planting the seeds. He become a, a, a role model, oh God. We thank you for Ifan, oh God. Lord, we, we pray that you continue to use him. And we know, oh God, that uh, for the Lord says, I have used you for a season, and the new, in the new season, you will not be shaken, says the Lord. For I am with you, and you know this, that I am with you, but the door of the uh, unknown will be open to you. Do not be afraid, because when you walk through the water, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, says the Lord. But it is me, and I'm going to allow you to walk in a way that supernatural things will take place in your life. Yes, I will open your mouth to speak my word, says the Lord. And you have the oracle of God. Don't think that you cannot speak, because 
because the speech that you just gave it was it was it was good it was uh, it was it, it was very clear and God is going to use you to speak and even when you don't speak your life speaks louder than your words and I am with you says the Lord Lord, we thank you for Ifan. We pray that you continue to use him. We thank you for Mr. Vinata, for his father. We thank you, Lord, for such a godly man, a godly parents of God, uh, Ifan's uh, father and mother. Lord, we pray that you will use them as a team, the first generation and the second generation and the next, next generation, so God, because your plan does not stop in one generation only. It will flow, it will flow, and it will only become greater and greater. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Actually, we from the music team have really showered him with blessing and prophecies and amazing encouragement last week, but I think we can always use some more, amen? <laughs> So I felt as Pastor Paul was praying, I got a vision, Ivan, of somebody preparing like a lunch, uh, packing up lunch, and I saw like a bag, like a backpack. Mm -hmm. I think God is saying, you know you are going on a journey and it can be, you know, exciting, but it can only also, also be like, a, oh, you know, you are kind of nervous, mm -hmm. nervous about it. You know, it's a new journey. It's an exciting journey, but it's a new journey. And the Lord is saying, I have packed your bags. Mm. I have prepared everything that you may need for your journey. So fear not. I just declare, I think we have said that word a lot. I think uh, Chiita and many other give prophetic word. Ifan, that fear not. The Lord mm. has packed everything you need. It's already in you. It's mm. with you. And he is with you. Not only he will give you a direction, but he's your guide and he's with you. Mm. So, Lord, we thank you. We just declare, God, mm. Lord, that every time he needs something, it's activated, Lord. Yes. That uh, backpack that you have prepared, the Holy Spirit in him, Lord, God, it's going to cause him to prosper him and to increase him. And every assignment that you will give him, he will accomplish with excellence and grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. We have a small token from the church. Thank you. Thank you, Ifan. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> All right, you may be seated. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. Now, um, I want you to understand that when the Holy Spirit works, you can even catch the words that has been prayed for, for Ifan, and you can identify that that, that, that word is also for me. That is uh, because when we pray, we pray according to the word of God. Because some of you, I know that some of you, that word is also for some of you that has been experiencing you are, you are crossing in a journey. You are crossing in a journey in your life and you have been fearful. And the Lord said, do not be afraid. And do not be afraid. And the word of God that I quoted just now, it says that uh, it's from Isaiah actually. You shall walk through the water. You shall walk to, uh, and you will not drown. You will walk through the fire and you shall not be burned. Why don't you receive that? Because the word that I'm going to share to you, I'm not going to preach long, I hope. <laughs> but uh, let, me, let me give this introduction. 2018, Happy New Year, yes. Uh, new calendar, yes. But uh, do you know that uh, God is working in such a way that he is not bound by the Roman calendar? year. God is an awesome God and uh, God works in many different ways and our God is a miraculous God. He is a miraculous God and uh, many times, you know, when we understand about Christianity, when we, if you use your logic, it will not, uh, uh, it, uh, it, 
you will not be able to uh, swallow it easily if you depend on your logic, on your rationale, because I would say everything, can you say everything? everything? Everything that God does, that God does is supernatural. Everything that God does is miraculous. Everything that God does, um, it doesn't make sense to our common logic. So today I'm going to preach to you and the subject is multiply and I'm going to, I, I just want to share three three points which I will elaborate later on, but let me begin with this. Let me begin with this. Um, what, what do you mean, Pastor, when you said that when God does something, it doesn't make sense? Think about this, your salvation. How can you be saved by only believing and receiving Jesus? Well, some people think that in order for you to go to heaven, in order for you to be able to be safe, you have to give a lot of money, you have to, you have to help the poor. Well, in fact, what God is doing, even if you don't have money, God, if you come to Jesus, if you welcome him, he will instead bless you. And he will make you rich. Not only financially, it's beyond that, beyond that even with what money cannot buy. Are you still with me? Now, when we talk about uh, salvation, you know, you may think that uh, you will only be saved when you're, when you're holy, when you're good, when you do good. Well, in the word of God, actually, you don't have to be holy in order for you to receive Jesus. You just come in repentance, you come in, in brokenness and receive Jesus and he will make you holy. When some people think that you have to do good in order for you to be safe, but actually the Bible says, just receive me, I will change you and when you receive Jesus, he will transform you and you will do good, not the other way around. How about baptism? Baptism. It doesn't make sense that when you believe, you know, and then you receive Jesus, you repented, and you are baptized in water, and you, when you, when you are uh, immersed into the water, it's like you identify yourself as you died with Christ, and when you come out from the water, you, 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 you race with Christ, it doesn't make sense, and it's just God is going to give you a new life. Come on now, what I'm going to tell you right now is there's so many, so many, so many supernatural things, so many supernatural things. So if I can say, if I can say welcome to the supernatural world, it is, it is really true because Christianity is not only knowing about God, but you know God. Are you still with me? And when I said that, yes, you are going to experience, not only um, uh, intellectually you know, but you will experience him, I am excited about that because somebody asked me a question many years ago, Pastor Paul, well, actually several retreats ago when we have a retreat among the carcels two years ago, somebody asked me this question, Pastor Paul, what makes you always exciting following Jesus? The answer is very clear because since I received Jesus 38 years ago, I experienced so many things that logically I cannot, by my own strength, I cannot do it, I cannot experience it, I don't know how to do it, so many things, so many things that I don't know, I can, and all those relatives of I can, I can, I can, you know, but Jesus always do it for me. So I'm excited. If I can do what I can do, it's, uh, it's common. If you can do what you can do, well, it's, it's normal, right? But if you can do what you know you, can do, you cannot do, then you know it's God. So that makes my life exciting. And I want you to be excited all the time. It's, it's just like when you, when you uh, let's for instance, uh, let's, let's, let's read this verse here. This is our theme for this year. I took it from the book of John chapter 4 verse 38. And the verse that is quoted in this slide here is quoted from the Passion Translation. It says in John 4, verse 38 from the Passion Translation, it says, I have sent you out to harvest a field that you haven't planted, where many others have labored. Oops, no, not King James. I'm, I'm reading from the slide. All right, thank you, Jesus. 
They are so excited. They are so fast. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I've sent you out to harvest a field that you haven't planted, where many others have labored long and hard before you, and now you are privileged to profit from their labors and, re and reap the harvest. And now it says, and now you are privileged to profit. How many of you like profit? Not every one of you. I like profit. Okay, you too. Okay, two of us. How many of you like profit? This is real, and this is supernatural. And, uh, and when I pray, when I said about multiply, uh, it, it, is, it is God's miraculous power. Can I have uh, uh, water, please? And uh, I know that you are going to experience God in a supernatural way. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Tom. He that give prophet a water, he will receive the prophet's reward. That's why some people only give water. Some of you don't get it. <laughs> okay. Now, um, this, is, this is powerful. But I want, I want you to read uh, the whole context from this verse. And uh, I will begin with point number one. All right, uh, in the book of John chapter four, verse 35, and I'm going to read from the New King James translation. Jesus said, do not say they are still four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the field, for they are already white for harvest. And he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life that both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together 37 is this good so far yes. it's getting better all right for in this saying is true and in this the saying is true one sows and another reaps verse 38 i send you to reap for which that you have not labors others have labored and you have entered into their labors and uh, point number one, as you read this verse, multiply, multiply, multiply. In, if, if you want to experience multiplication, and when I said about multiplication, uh, it's easy for you, uh, or at least for some of you that only think about uh, financial. No, it, it's beyond financial. I said it earlier. God is going to multiply you in such a way that you will receive things that even cannot be bought by money. You like that? Yes. How about uh, multiply in, 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 in wisdom? Amen. How about you receive uh, multiplication in knowledge? Yes. How about in faith? Yes. Your faith will multiply. How about in serving? Yes. How about in your love? Yes. How about in your uh, patience? How about in the fruits of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Come on, how, how come it's slowing down? Uh, still amen? <laughs> Okay, uh, mu multiplication in, in, in so many different ways. This morning when we greeted one another, you know, when Pastor Tom mentioned to the earlier service, uh, multiply, multiply, a mother shook my hand and said, but Pastor, I don't want to have another child. No, that's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> she already has six children. <laughs> and <laughs> um, so um, I, I, I'm... I'm this is about supernatural things, supernatural things. And uh, point number one, can you say point number one? Point number one, in order for you to experience, not only to know, but to experience multiplication in your life, you have to have a new way of thinking. Renew your mind, renew your mind. How can you renew your mind? How can I renew my mind? Because so many times it is easy for us to have a, a negative mindset. It is very easy. Isn't that true that if I ask you to say uh, 10 things, the 10, 10 good things about the person sitting closest to you, you know, it may take you uh, a long time. It may, you know, okay, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's okay because uh, uh, John is trying to translate in Chinese. So, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Can you back, uh, focus here? Okay, so uh, where was I? <laughs> yeah, um, usually when I ask you to think about the 10 good things about the person sitting 
on your left or on your right. If I give you 10 seconds, you may only get one, or maybe you, you just smile and, ah, oh, what is the good thing about you? What is the good thing about, uh, <laughs> But if I ask you to think about the negative things for uh, the person who is sitting on your left, on your right, if I give you uh, 10 seconds for 10 points, you may get 20 points. <laughs> and that's why the Bible says, a death and life are in the, in the power of your tongue. You know, so not life and death, but death and life. You get that? Not life and death, but death and life. Uh, it's not uh, uh, a play of words, but God has a meaning because when God said that, usually our mind is filled with the negative things. So, have a renewed mind. Have a renewed mind. How can you renew your mind? And in a moment, I'd like to have uh, somebody to play the keyboard here because I want to. I want you to experience, I want to experience, I want to demonstrate, I want to facilitate, I want to model, and I want to bring you so that each one of you will hear God. Some of you ask this question, I will hear God, Pastor? Yes. 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 God will speak to you. In fact, God speaks to everyone. God speaks to everyone. God speaks to everybody. Even God speaks to e e e if you have not received Jesus, God will speak to you too. God speaks to everyone, yes. But God will speak intimately only to his friends. But God speaks to everyone. So I will facilitate and I will walk with you so that you will hear God. And you will renew your mind. How can you renew your mind? You can renew your mind. We can renew our mind from the word of God. So I ask uh, the keyboard to play, not because uh, we can only hear God when somebody plays in the keyboard, but uh, uh, what I learn is this. When King Saul was attacked by the evil spirit, he called David, a young man, teenager at that time, and King Saul asked David to play harp. And when that happened, the presence of the Lord comes and the evil spirit fled. But you will hear God even when there is no music. You will hear God even when you're driving. If you want to hear God, He will speak to you. And the guideline is for you to regularly, daily, just like when Captain Jesus speaks, when you spend time in the Word daily, that Word will pop up just right when you need it. Are you with me? And you can apply it in your life. You can apply it in your life. Because I, I, I really believe that you will multiply. And uh, so I want to ask you to stand up, please. And uh, I want you to slow down. I want you to slow down. I want you to... Um, how about if you take a deep breath? <sighs> okay, is that okay? Okay, one more time. This is not meditation. I just want you to, to relax. That's what I mean. Just, just relax. Just relax. Because I will walk with you so that you will be able to do it when you go home or wherever you are. All right, close your eyes. Close your eyes. <laughs> close your eyes. Sometimes, sometimes we open our eyes and we didn't see. And if we want to focus on anything, sometimes we close our eyes. That's why I ask you to close your eyes. So, let's walk with me. First, by saying, Lord, renew my mind. Renew my mind. I give you the liberty, I give you the freedom to renew my mind. Now, Lord, speak to me, to your words. Now, some of you have been having this anxiety. And the Word of God says, I'm going to give you faith. And some of you, you have been going through a problem, a situation in such a way that you feel like you cannot bear it anymore. Let's park right there for some two, three seconds. 
you feel like you cannot bear it anymore. And the, the Word of God says, there is no temptation that you are going through that is beyond that you can endure. Because I, God, I will give you a way out that you can escape. Think about that word. Don't think about it's so overwhelming, God, I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. The word of God says, yes, you can, yes, you can, yes, you can. This is how you renew your mind. When you feel like you have you have faced a dead end, there is no way, there is no way. God will make a way where there seems to be no way and it's not only a song, but Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. So you can come to Jesus and say, Jesus, you are the way. Show me what I need to do. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. When you don't have the answer, know that Jesus is the truth. I don't know what you're going through right now, but um, when you face a situation that, that you feel like it is so heavy on your, on your shoulder. The word of God says in Jeremiah 32, 27, Behold, I am I'm the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too difficult for me? You meditate on that word. Is there anything too difficult for God? Holy Spirit, you speak. Now, I cannot go into the detail of what you're going through, let alone what is in your mind right now, but I can give you a very simple guideline. If you have a bad thought, if you have a negative thought, and you struggle in one particular area, the simplest thing that you can get the answer is to think the exact opposite of what is going on in your mind. If you feel that I'm not good, I'm not good, I'm not good, actually you're good. If you feel that people don't care about you, if you think, if you dwell in that thoughts and you feel like I, I, I'm not good, people don't care about me, and if you, if you entertain that kind of thoughts, it is easy for you to begin to think even God doesn't care about me. That is not true. God cares for you. God cares for you. If you think that you're, you're worthless, my parents, my, my friends, my siblings always compare me to somebody else, to my sister, to my brother, to my neighbors, to my friend, and so forth, and uh, you are meant for nothing, you're good for nothing, the, what is the exact opposite? You are special. You, you are so special. Come on. Jesus died for you. Jesus died for you. And God will continue to speak to you. When there is a, a voice in your mind, sometimes you talk to yourself. I do too. Sometimes you talk to yourself and you may say, I'm a failure, I'm a failure, I'm a failure. Jesus bore the cross. He carried the cross so that you can stand up. Now allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. The atmosphere is changing now. It's not only a song that we sing. The atmosphere is changing now. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And you need to allow the Word of God to sink in your heart. When you are afraid, put your trust in Him. When you are discouraged, learn from David. David encouraged himself in the Lord. It is normal. This is life. Don't feel bad if you are discouraged. 
This is the reality of life. But how can you be encouraged? It's very easy to encourage yourself in the Lord. So Lord Jesus, we thank you. We welcome 2018 with this renewed mind. Renewed, renewed. Our mind is renewed. Our mind is renewed. Thank you, Lord. As you close your eyes, how many of you, how many of you right now, I'm not going to ask you to speak. I'm not going to ask you to come up forward. But how many of you, you hear God speaks to you personally? Lift up your hand. All right, all right. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Come on. Wow. Yes. Oh, God. Look at that. Thank you, Jesus. So, yes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. So, remember that. Remember that. This is so practical. So many of you lift up your hands. This is so real. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. And I'm going to continue to share the word of God to you. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18, it says, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Again, I said to you last week, Yes, okay. You can be seated. Let's give Pavel a big hand. I know she's sweating a little bit. <laughs> it was unrehearsed. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I explained to you last week that this is, this is a supernatural word. That this, this, this word, this is a promise for God, from God. A promise from God. A promise from God. God, oof, this is so powerful. That means God is going to do miraculous things in your life. There is no road in the wilderness. There is no rivers in the desert. So if you, if you face a dead end, God will make a road. Hello? If you are dry, right now you are dry. You may, you may look good on the outside. You may smile, but uh, on the inside you feel like you are dry. God will make rivers in your desert so that this desert, this earth, is no, no longer dry. Are you with me? Yes. So, uh, this is the promise of God. Now, don't let anyone control your life by their words. Don't let anyone affect your life because of what they say about you. How about if you allow your life to be controlled, to be guided by what God said about you? Now I'm, I'm walking slowly with you. Now let me ask you this question. Are you walking are you walking with what God has said to you? I hope the answer is yes. But let's go deeper. Are you walking with what God is saying? What's the difference? I hope you can tell the difference because... If you walk with what God has said, at least you know the word, at least you know the promises of God, that is very good. But what is the difference between what God said and what God is saying? The difference is kairos. What is kairos? That means that word becomes your quickening word. It becomes a rhema in your life right now. Still don't understand, Pastor. Glad you asked. All right. It's just like a woman when she is pregnant, expecting a baby. And uh, what they usually know is nine months, how many weeks? 40 weeks. All right. I never got pregnant, so I need to look at my wife. Okay. Uh, 40 weeks. Uh, yeah. You know about 40 weeks, but when the baby is going to be born, actually, mothers, except you go through C-section, usually mothers don't know. 
That is what I mean by you know the time, you know the chronos, but you don't know the kairos. Are you still with me? So when I, when, I, when I say this, I pray that you will experience, you will experience not only uh, God intellectually, but you experience God in your life. Allow God to guide you by what he is saying right now. It is simple, right? Say right. Okay, tell your neighbor, it is very simple. Okay, last week we declare, I, I declare so many things, goodbye, whatever, whatever. If you were not here last week, I want you to watch the uh, archive of the sermon. You can, you can check to our website and uh, you, can, you can watch the, uh, the video sermon. And we declare so many things, we say goodbye, goodbye depression, goodbye fear, goodbye death, goodbye, you know, and we welcome blessing, we, 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 we welcome faith, we welcome courage, and, and so forth and so forth. And uh, when I prayed, the Lord reminded me about this verse, when the Hebrew people get out of Egypt, God said to Moses, the enemy that you see now, you will see them no more. Ooh. How about... God is saying to you right now, the enemy that you saw in 2017, you will see them no more. So when you declare goodbye, you say goodbye. And the way that, if you remember what I asked you to do last week was you say goodbye, uh, not goodbye, you know, see you later. No, 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 no. Goodbye means goodbye. I am not going to see you anymore. The enemy that you see 2017, you will see them no more. And uh, sometimes we forgot that the real battle, the, the real battle, battleground is in your mind. And sometimes because many people like to watch so many movies, their mind is affected and they begin to think that life is like a movie. Life is like a movie, uh, what do you mean? Uh, that a problem will be solved in one episode. So when you have to endure a long time battle, you cannot stand anymore. That is movie. Life is real life. Are you with me? Okay. So um, a new way of looking at your life when you have a renewed mind, a renewed mind. A new mind means you have a new perspective, a new perspective. Romans chapter 12, verse one and two. You know, let's focus on verse two. It says that uh, you need to be, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by what? Can you say it out loud? By what? I cannot hear you. By what? By the renewing of your mind. How can you renew, 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 renew? Can you say renew? Renew, that means re uh, is a prefix, re means again. That means actually it's already there, but you just have to renew it. What do you mean? Well, actually you need to go back to the original mindset that you already have. Like for instance, how about forgiveness? Forgiveness. Uh, so many times the teaching about forgiveness needs to be taught several times or even some people go to attend a seminar about forgiveness so that they can let it go, can let the burden go and so forth and so forth. But actually, forgiveness is very simple. Forgiveness is actually automatic. Forgiveness is actually, um, uh, you, you, you should be easy to forgive someone. How can you say that, Pastor? Because you are an adult. If you are children, children usually they can argue, they can fight. Half an hour later, they play again. That mindset of easy to forgive is there. So where is the missing link? When we grow up, when we grow up wrong, with the wrong mindset, it's not my fault. He has to ask forgiveness. I didn't do it. She does it. Oh, come on now. Little children, it's, it's easy. It's easy to forgive. When, when children argue, when children fight, they can, they can be friends again in half an hour. When the children fight and the parents get involved, 
Should I continue? <laughs> the children already befriend one another and the parents still fight. Repent. <laughs> so actually, that for forgiveness is, uh, it's, we need to renew our mind. That's why in the book of Revelation, it says, I make all things new. God doesn't say, I make all new things. That's the difference. I make all things new. It's being renewed again, renewed again. Point number two. Are you still breathing? Okay. All right. Point number two is very simple. Uh, when we talk about multiply, actually multiply is a, uh, uh, it's not a new word. It is from the beginning, from the beginning. You are actually, by default, you are, you are supposed to multiply. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, 28, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, 28, it says, um, so God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created you and I. So you and I are created in his image, okay? Male and female, he created them. Verse 28, verse 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, what? Be fruitful and be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful and multiply. Fill or replenish in a different translation. Fill means to, to replenish. Again, replenish. That means replenish it again. Replenish. Replenish the earth and subdue it. Keep in mind that we need to be fruitful and multiply. Multiply in what? Multiply according to God's image. You and I, we are created in the image of God so that we should multiply like that kind of people. So when we read this, uh, uh, subdue, subdue it and have dominion, some people think that we need to subdue people. We need to subdue our neighbor. We need to, we need to have dominion over our friend. No, that's not what it says. Or even just because... We are Christian doesn't mean that we need to subdue other people. No, 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 no. Subdue the earth. Not subdue people, not have dominion over people. Are you with me? So be fruitful and multiply. It is, it is since, since day one God created man. So it should be natural. It should be, hey, hey, come on, we, we need to multiply. We need to multiply so that when people look at you, when people look at us, people will say, oh, oh, oh this is different. This, uh, this man is different. This young man, even though he's young, he's smart, but he's not cocky. And this man, uh, he is rich, but he's humble, and, uh, and so forth and so forth. And they will find out, oh, oh, oh. He is a Christian. Oh, she is a Christian. So that is what it means. We need to multiply. We, we need to multiply of our own kind and image according to God's image that we have godly character, that we have love, we are serving, and we, we reach out to others so that others will experience the love of Christ and they will also be saved. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we need to believe in God's promises. Believe in, in God's promises. The opposite of faith is sight. Sometimes we look at what we see and uh, we lose our faith. But faith, you know, the opposite of faith is, is sight. Paul said we walk by faith and not by sight. What is point number one? Renew your mind. What is point number two? Not yet, okay? Don't go ahead of me. Point number two is have the right attitude. Have the right attitude. Have the right attitude come out of our comfort zone. What is comfort zone? The things that are predictable. I said earlier, uh, uh, well, three, four weeks ago, comfort zone is uh, we are creatures of habit. We don't like to change. And uh, we don't like to be uncomfortable. We, we like comfortable. We like to be convenient. But if you want to multiply, we need to have a right attitude. Have the right attitude. Things that are uh, not comfortable to you, things that are not predictable, things that are not familiar. And we have a choice. Can you say, I have a choice? 
Look at your neighbor. You have a choice. And you have to make a choice. And you have to make a choice. Okay. All right. Ask your neighbor, will you make a choice? And wait for the answer. No, no, no. Wait. You, you wait for the answer. Ask your neighbor, will you make a choice? Okay. <laughs> I got you. Because sometimes we just say it just like we just have to say it. But when I say wait for an answer, you, <laughs> you know, no, really mean it. You make a decision. You have to make a choice. Okay, praise the Lord. And have the right attitude. Have the right attitude. Sometimes, you know, we want to repeat the familiar, predictable past instead of moving on to the unfamiliar future by faith. And I learn about muscle memory. I like to exercise. That's why, that's why if you go to the gym, the, the, the trainer will ask you to change your routine. Right? Why? Because we may have muscle memory. So we need to break that. Even the <laughs> good habit sometimes may hinder you to experience the best. I used to have bad driving habit. I used to drive fast, fast, super fast, and beyond, way, way, way beyond speed limit. And uh, I didn't realize it because I like to drive fast. This is way, 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 you know, BC, you know, before I, well, I, after I received Christ, but I have not really renewed <laughs> until I was, I was, I was jailed <laughs> back when uh, the speed limit was still 55, I drove. You don't want to know. Multiply by two. <laughs> and I was jailed. I was jailed. <laughs> so you have to make a choice, you know. You can change whether you choose or wait until you are jailed. Thank God until uh, when, when I was jailed, you know. I made the decision. I changed. But some people, after they went through jail experience, you know, they still don't want to change. And everybody said, don't say amen, okay. <laughs> so, have the right attitude. Bad habit. How about eating habit? Nobody say anything, okay. So, uh, <laughs> sometimes it is easy for us to have personal default setting, meaning into the bad habit. Default setting. It's just like knee-jerk um, reaction. Mm -hmm. You know, knee-jerk reaction when you go to your doctor and then the, the doctor check. Boom, boom, boom. You know, it's just like. <laughs> Sometimes uh, you allow yourself to have a life by default mm -hmm. while God wants you to have a life full of destiny. If somebody hurt you, by default, you want to hurt them back. If somebody disappointed you, hurt you, you want to, by default, you want to revenge. It's by default. But how about when we learn, when we allow God to change our attitude, our attitude, then when somebody hurt you, you, you will automatically forgive. Isn't it true when somebody cut you on the freeway, it is easier for you to forgive than when your brother hurt you? Somebody that you know? I know some, some of you may not respond because it is even difficult for you to forgive somebody that cut you on the freeway let alone somebody that you know. Am I making sense? So you can relate with me. All right. So why don't we change our default system, our default system, our autopilot? When somebody hurt you, you remember that actually in life, 
we exchange each other. We exchange role, meaning sometimes I may be offended, but sometimes I may be the offender. Isn't that true in life? Yes. You may offend me, but sometimes I may offend you. That's why Jesus said in the Lord's Prayer, forgive. Ask forgiveness and also forgive. So have the right attitude. The last point. I'm almost done. Oh, Jesus. Have the right vision. Let's go back to that John chapter 4, verse 35. John chapter 4, verse 35, it says, Jesus said, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. That means sometimes we spend too much of our time just looking down. Lift up your eyes. Something funny uh, happened to me when I read this verse over and over and over again, and I want to share with you. Is it okay? But uh, what I'm going to share to you is out of context, to be honest. Uh, It is not hermeneutically correct, but I want to share it to you anyway. Uh, Because uh, when when I read this verse, somehow the impression that I get is this. Let me look down here because I don't want to look at anyone. But uh, there are many men here that are mature, single, ready to get married, and they try to find somebody else outside the church. The word for you, all men, mature, adult, who are ready, Just lift up your eyes. (laughs) And look around. They are ready. (laughs) Not for harvest. You don't harvest them. (laughs) Hey, come on, man. If you don't want to act, you are responsible. (laughs) So lift up your eyes and look around. Don't have to go anywhere. Don't have to go. Just look around. There are so many single, mature, and again, I'm, I'm not looking at anyone. So many uh, mature adult single women available in the church. Amen. I'm done. <laughs> so point number three is have the right vision. <laughs> have a right vision. Ah. Oh. I feel like I need to repeat that again in in the future so that you all, you all will remember I'm in the single, mature, adult, ready, available man. So point number one is what? Number two? Number three, and you will multiply. Let's pray. Let's pray. We are going to partake in communion, and I will not forget it this time. (laughs) Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Bless them. I pray for your abundant blessing upon your people. Spiritual blessing, financial blessing, relational blessing. In the name of Jesus, that whatever they do shall prosper to glorify your name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, everybody shout. Amen, amen, amen.